We often look toward Greece and Rome as the originators of Western civilization, and from a Eurocentric point of view, that is of course correct. But considering a more historically accurate worldview, we have to look toward the true origin of Western civilization, the people who greatly influenced Greece and Rome itself. Most of us know that Egypt is the true mother of Western civilization, and without the accomplishment of one African king, our own civilization might look somewhat different. Today, we're going to talk about the most important man in the history of Western civilization. <laughs> What up African world, it's home team here and welcome back to another video of African history, culture, and worldview. By supporting this channel on Patreon, you're helping in the creation of these videos and supporting this content. If you'd like access to full courses and sources, or you simply want to show your support, you may do so by clicking the Patreon link in the description box below. King Narmer or Menes is believed to have lived around 3050 BC. He was one of the last pre-dynastic kings of the Nile Valley who's associated with the triumphant unification of Egypt. I think we often neglect how important this event was for our civilization. I mean, if we just look at our own capital in Washington DC, we see obvious influences of King Narmer's accomplishment. Now of course Egyptian culture is older than King Narmer, but he's still very important because he's the one that unified Upper and Lower Egypt, centralizing Egyptian culture and civilization, helping it become more visible and most importantly more presentable to the rest of the world. Without Narmer, the world would have been introduced to various aspects of Nile Valley culture that would have made it harder to appropriate as it was filled with countless local aspects and establishing meaning would have been difficult. This is not to suggest, however, that after Narmer unified Egypt, everyone was on the same page because they weren't. It's simply to suggest that his glorious accomplishment gave the region a more official and consistent cultural narrative. Egyptian culture was an expression of various African cultures originating further south, coming down the Nile, and peaking in Egypt. Genuine scholars agree that Egypt heavily influenced the civilizations of Greece and Rome in architecture, sculpture, religion, writing, intellectual thought, and just the overall building blocks of human civilization itself. There's no doubting the influence Egypt had on its non-African neighbors. In fact, there's a common saying that Egyptian civilization or culture conquered the conquerors as they began to mimic African culture nearly in totality. Now, if it weren't for King Narmer, who's largely credited with the unification of Egypt, Western civilization would perhaps look a bit different. I like to say that in a sense, Narmer packaged African culture and presented it neatly to the rest of the world, ultimately influencing our North American civilization today. Before Narmer, there were various Egyptian cities that weren't necessarily on the same page culturally. Each city highlighted different aspects of Nile Valley civilization and had varying architectural styles. Though urban culture arose in Egypt as far back as 4000 BC, Egypt was not politically unified. Before Narmer, the Nile Valley was essentially in competition with one another. The earliest significant cultural hub in the Nile Valley was the Nubian state of Tasseti. At one point, Nilo-Saharan Nubians of Tasseti were the most culturally dominant and some suggest that they were indeed the most influential. If they continued their dominance, Western civilization would perhaps be different. Thus, King Narmer had to compete with various Nubian, Egyptian, and perhaps even Libyan city-states, all of which were vying for power, influence, and dominance over the entire Nile Valley. And this African struggle was to determine the entire cultural fate of Western civilization itself, going on to birth popular culture's most beloved civilizations, Greece and Rome. So how did it all begin? King Norma is believed to have come from Nekin, mostly known by its Greek name Hierocompolis, a capital and shrine city of the god Horus. Interestingly enough, if he didn't come from this city, perhaps another Egyptian deity would capture the imagination of the Nile Valley. But Horus was certainly a popular figure in Narmer city and was therefore highlighted above all the other local gods along the Nile due to Narmer's victory. However, according to the Egyptian historian Manetho, Narmer originally came from Thinis, a city in Upper Egypt or Southern Egypt. One of the prime pieces of his unification of Egypt is a stone tablet called the Narmer Palette. 
The palace depiction of the famous warrior King Narmer or Menes as wearing both the red crown of Lower Egypt and the white crown of Upper Egypt is generally interpreted as a symbol of Egypt's unification into a single nation. Besides King Narmer's name, the tablet contains details of the many military victories he won while consolidating his power. A ceremonial macehead also discovered in that city depicts Narmer as capturing 120,000 men, 400 oxen, and countless goats, and the cities of northern Egypt in the delta. After this victory, Narmer is believed to have married a Memphite aristocrat in order to consolidate his power. Queen Nithotep was possibly that noble heiress. Narmer continued his conquests, driving his armies into the eastern desert, where an inscription was discovered on the rocks of Wadi Kash on the Koptos trade route. The unification of Egypt by Menes established one of the earliest forms of centralized government in Africa. Because of Narmer, Egypt entered a period of rapid development that included the regulation of trade links and the construction of palaces, large tombs, and religious temples. As mentioned before, preparing the so-called package of civilization for the Western world. In addition, Greater emphasis was placed on creating methods of irrigation to produce the abundant crops needed to sustain Egypt's growing population. Because of Narmer, Egypt became the most influential human civilization on the planet and via hindsight, Pharaoh Narmer became the most important figure in the history of Western civilization. Well I'm all out guys, if you like these videos and want to help in its continued production, consider supporting the home team on Patreon.com. The link is in the description box below. Know thyself. Remember your ancestors. Peace.